Then there are some companies, some airship companies who are looking at innovative concepts. One of them is this Worldwide Aeros Corporation. They have come up with this particular uh, vehicle. We travel the globe to discover innovative gadgets, groundbreaking inventions and future forward vehicles. From the cutting edge to the inspiring. So buckle up and prepare to experience the latest in tech toys. The history of airships goes back more than a century. Those awkward, cigar-shaped craft lumbered through the skies without much purpose. The Germans refined the concept, creating floating palaces of great beauty and purpose. Today, blimps are ubiquitous as they float over football stadiums, providing incredible views of the games down below. But now, one airship's technology is a true game-changer. The Aeros craft a cargo-carrying transport with a host of innovations. Tech Toys 360 traveled to Tustin, California to explore how advances in material science, aeronautical engineering and smart technology are taking an old concept to new heights. This is not the moon, nor a mad science experiment. Aeronautical engineers and tech experts scurry about this unusual object. Perhaps science fiction is turning into reality. This is the most advanced airship of our time, Aero's Craft. This unique vehicle is safely parked in an immense 500,000 square foot hangar. That's more than 11 acres. It's massive. We talk technology with pilot Corky Bellinger. Flying an airship, it's a, it's a little bit airplane, it's a little bit helicopter, and it's a little bit balloon. It's a little bit of all three. We have vector thrust, we can rotate the engines up and we can take off very similar and land very similar to a helicopter. We can go point to point. We don't have to have a runway. It's a little bit airplane because if you can imagine in your mind drawing a, a line from nose to tail, if you're looking at it from the side, if you cut the bottom off and made it disappear, it looks just exactly like the wing of an airplane. So as we fly through the air, we get dynamic lift like an airplane does. And then of course it's full of helium, so we have the properties of a balloon. One groundbreaking innovation developed by Eros is the Kosh system, the control of static heaviness. This enables the craft to be lighter than air in flight, like traditional airships, but also control buoyancy on the ground. We have a system called the Kosh system, and it's, it's an acronym for uh, control of static heaviness. And the biggest problem that airships have had since airships started was what do you do when you get to point B and you take off your payload, whether it be passengers or feathers or whatever? Because if you take 100 pounds out, it's going to want to rise. Traditionally, a ground crew and ballast would help control lift. With Kosh, the helium itself is displaced or compressed, enabling the craft to remain grounded. What we do with this cost system is we come into an area, we compress the helium as we're descending, and we would get on the ground, we offload our payload, we compress this helium, get us back to statically neutral position instead of being 20 tons heavy or 60 tons heavy. We can compress that much helium and get us back to where we weigh nothing again, roll the engines up and off we go. We don't have to have anybody on the ground, no infrastructure whatsoever. To take off again, the compressed helium is slowly released into the cavernous interior, allowing the ship to once again rise into the air. Though it's simple in theory, it took years of research and development and over two dozen engineers to make the aircraft a reality. The developer, Igor Pasternak, took over a decade ago when he envisioned a rebirth of airship travel. The Aeros craft is unique among current airships. It has a rigid internal structure comprised of lightweight aluminum members and a series of tension cables designed to provide extra support and rigidity to the frame. The 200 trusses taken together are 5,600 feet long, more than a mile in length. Within this frame, covered in ultra-durable materials, non-flammable, lighter-than-air helium is stored. The helium, along with a forward series of turbofan jet engines, provide lift for takeoff, sending this craft through the skies. The 
building these lighter than airships, you're always battling the weight versus strength or weight versus performance. Some of the key things is building these compression tanks that we use on this control static heaviness system is how to combine that in a way that can be lightweight but yet efficient and the performance stays up there to make it useful on this aircraft and then up in the future on the next aircraft. Perhaps a floating hotel or cruise type ship will transport people around in a unique, luxurious environment. Today, a passenger version is possible. The technologically advanced cockpit is attached to the bottom of the airship. Inside, smart controls have replaced analog button and switches. The cockpit in this is different mainly due to modern technology. In most airplanes, you've got analog gauges. You know, you've got dials with needles on them. If you look around, you'll notice that there's almost a complete absence of anything analog. If everything's digital. It's like an iPad, a large iPad with all those different pages. Though there is a manual override, the ship is piloted through a series of touchscreen interfaces. The airship has been retooled with technology for the 21st century. The most intelligent allow the pilot to shift fuel from tank to tank. See the transfer in real time, monitor helium levels, and visually inspect every part of the airship, inside or out. The airship of old has entered the 21st century. Operating at one-third the cost of most cargo planes, the sky's the limit, and the future is limitless. So it's a slightly promotional video. But that's okay. It basically tells you the logic behind their design. And uh, we have seen various buoyancy compensation systems. And in that, there was one system called as compressed gas system, in which I said that if you have onboard compression of gas, you could reduce the volume of the lifting gas. And that is what they are doing here. But it's economical and viable only on such large systems. You try to do this on a small remotely controlled airship, you will find that it is un uh, you know, unviable from the point of view of weight and complexity. So, it is an innovative system where uh, one of the basic operational problem of airships that is how to handle change in buoyancy when payload is removed without the need to ballast it is tackled in a very innovative fashion. So, the company is uh, struggling to make this a reality. They are, these are very expensive systems as you can see. The hangar itself is such a large one. So, they depend, the success of these projects depends a lot on whether they are able to convince financiers to finance them, whether they are able to convince someone to place the first order to take the risk for operating this system. Because when you have a system like this, then you are the first person to actually go and tackle the regulatory bodies, the operators, the air traffic controllers, everybody is going to resist introduction of a totally new system because it complicates their life. So, in some businesses there is a first mover advantage, in some businesses there is a disadvantage, there are high costs. But if you get it right, then other people will take time to catch up. 